Hi guys, Matt from 123MyT here. In this video, we will take a look at the Apple MacBook Pro 14 inch and see if it's still worthwhile in 2022. There are three different MacBooks in the MacBook Pro range. There is the entry level 13 inch MacBook, which I already did a video for, and you can check that out in the link in the description. Then there is the 14 inch MacBook, which is the model we have here today. And last in the lineup is the 16 inch MacBook, which has a slightly larger screen. This MacBook is a 14 inch laptop and it comes with the M1 processor which has eight cores. It also has a 14 core GPU and a 16 core neural engine. If you don't know what a neural engine is, it controls the AI part of the MacBook. Along with 16 gigabyte of unified memory and 512 gigabyte of SSD storage. Pricing for the 14 inch Pro starts around 1999 USD for the M1 Pro CPU and it goes all the way up to $34.99 USD for the M1 Max CPU. When buying the laptop on the Apple website, you will have a chance to choose bigger storage, memory and CPU options. Let's take a look inside the box. First up in the box you will have the MacBook Pro itself. And along the bottom it has MacBook Pro stamped into the aluminium. The chassis is held together by 8 tech screws and it also has 4 thick black rubber feet to improve the airflow. And on the top you will have the standard Apple logo. This doesn't light up when it's in use. In terms of accessories, in the box you will get warranty and setup documentation. It also includes two black Apple stickers. Next up you will have a 67 watt USB-C power adapter. I tested the MacBook and it uses around 42 watts when charging and a max of 60 watts when doing the benchmark. But you can expect around 11 hours of general use and up to 17 hours of video playback. Charging the battery from empty to full should take around an hour. The plug of the adapter does come off and you can buy an extension cable for it. The last accessory in the box is the USB-C to the MagSafe 3 cable and it lights up when you plug it in. When you take the MacBook Pro out and you open the lid, it will guide you through the setup process. During this process, you will be prompted to set up Touch ID and you will have to train your finger. Now this can be used to unlock your MacBook Pro, authenticate payments or authenticate uh, passwords. If it's one thing that I feel Apple never skimps on, it's their screens. The MacBook Pro comes with a 14.2 inch Liquid Retina XDR display. With a resolution of 3024 by 1964 at 254 pixels per inch and up to 1000 nits of brightness. It can even go higher to 1600 nits for HDR content. And it makes for some pretty impressive movie watching. Let's take a look. Humanity's best weapon. Master Chief, huh? He is lethal, upgradable, and most importantly, controllable. You might have noticed across the top of the display there is a notch. Apple has done well with this design as it gives you more space without taking up any extra room because it sits in the menu bar. Inside the notch you have an upgraded 1080p FaceTime HD camera which is great for those conference calls. It's an upgrade from the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which only has a 720p camera. All the MacBook Pros come with a backlit magic keyboard and it's a delight to type on. The keys do not bend when pressing and they don't tend to wobble too much. One difference between the 13 inch model and the 14 inch model is the touch bar has been removed and the escape and function keys have been re-added. The backlit keyboard is also controlled by the ambient light sensor, so it only turns on when the lights are low. Pretty cool, huh? The trackpad is still pretty much the same. It's a force touch trackpad, and it allows for precise cursor control and multi-touch gestures. The MacBook Pro 14 inch comes with a six speaker sound system with force cancelling woofers and wide stereo sound. I thought the 13 inch had good speakers, but the speakers on the 14 inch MacBook Pro are really the next level. And I don't say this lightly, it's like having a dedicated stereo in your room. 
Let's take a listen. On the left you have a MagSafe 3 charging port, two Thunderbolt 4 ports and a headphone jack. On the right side you have a HDMI port, Thunderbolt 4 port and an SDXC card reader. The Thunderbolt 4 port doubles as a display port, so if you have a USB-C to HDMI adapter you can plug in an external display. For me the HDMI port is a necessary addition and I never understood why Apple didn't include them in the first place. You can have up to two external displays at 6K resolution running at 60Hz. The overall build quality is great and there is little to no flex on the MacBook Pro. Also the silver aluminum doesn't leave fingerprints which is great. For me I feel like it's almost the perfect size but there is some weight to it. So if you intend to carry around the MacBook Pro a lot, maybe check the weight because the 13 inch MacBook Pro or the MacBook Air range might be better for you. Underneath on both sides you have an air vent. I get that they are there for airflow, but the position of these vents is right where you would put your hands to carry the MacBook. And while they aren't sharp, I did find them annoying. Better placement for air vents are within the hinge itself like these ones are. Talking about hinges, the display hinge only folds back about 160 degrees, however other laptops go all the way back to 180 degrees, so 160 does feel a little bit awkward. Let's go ahead and run the Geekbench benchmark software. Cool, so the MacBook Pro 14 inch recorded a single core score of 1770 and a multi core score of 9995. And if we compare that with the scores of the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro 13 inch, we see there's not much difference in the single core scores. However, in the multi core scores, there's a pretty big difference of around about 2,315. When running a benchmark, and while the MacBook Pro is under load, it's a really good time to check the temperatures and see where the MacBook Pro is heating up. The room I'm in at the moment has a temperature of around about 27 degrees Celsius at the time of recording. As you can see here, the MacBook Pro really heats up in the middle of the keyboard to about 44 degrees and about 40 degrees in the hinges of the, of the display. So there's some really clever design here as there's no heat where you might be placing your hands and your palms when typing. MacBook Pros are designed with content creators in mind, people who are video editors and music creators. And in doing so they leave out gamers. The hardware just doesn't support gaming or a native install of Windows. So if you're after a gaming machine then you're better off going with a gaming laptop. However if you are a content creator then the MacBook Pro 14 is the best all rounder in my opinion. The display is brilliant and the speakers are the best I've heard on any laptop. And you get all this in a small 14 inch footprint. Guys, don't forget to check out my other videos such as how to use focus on an iPhone or iPad. And do me a favor, if you know anyone who might like this video, please share it with them. Hit the subscribe button and smash the bell icon.